This is Detective Recapped. Today I'm going to explain a psychological thriller film called The Quiet. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. It's been a long day at school, and most of the students are enjoying their break. But one table in particular doesn't have the same bustling energy as the other ones do. Dot is an orphan teenager who's deaf and a social outcast, and she's sitting by herself while watching everyone else. She sees her gorgeous stepsister, Nina Deer, and her very talkative friend, Michelle Fell. The two of them are gossiping about the tall and handsome Connor Kennedy, who's walking by to eat with his friends. When Nina and Michelle catch Dot looking at them, the girls get irritated and complain about how even the freaks at school don't like her. Then their college advisor, Janice Feltzwater, approaches Dot to keep her company. But instead of staying with her, Dot immediately walks away and hides in a quiet restroom, where she spends the remainder of her day in. Eventually, Nina finds her, slams the door, and drags her out of the restroom. On the drive home, Michelle calls Dot a freak straight to her face. As for Nina, she starts mulling over Dot's life when she first arrived in their house after the accidental death of her father. She was sent to live with her godparents, Paul Deere, a brilliant architect, and his wife, Olivia Deere. Until now, Nina's hung up on how weird Dot is, that she still can't accept that her parents took her in in spite of it. After a while, Janice meets Paul and expresses her concerns about Dot. In turn, Paul informs her of Dot's illness and the reason of her unhappiness. Janice learns that Dot had recently lost her father and that her mother died of cancer when she was just seven years old. And the woman's startled, that she's already been through so much at such a young age. But on the flip side, she's glad to learn that Paul is a good man and she's grateful that he accepted Dot into their family. Paul then gets some antibiotics from the pharmacy and bids Janice goodnight. After arriving home, Paul greets his girls and asks them about their day before heading to the living room to check on his wife. Olivia has already fallen asleep there from the sheer exhaustion of working all day. He then puts her to bed and gives a pill to her, and it becomes clear that Olivia is quite addicted to them. Paul then joins the girls for supper and advises that they all study sign language so they can communicate better with Dot, especially since she's staying there for a long time. Nina, however, isn't interested in any of that, so she starts to leave for Michelle's house to stay the night. But before leaving, she sarcastically tells Paul that she wants him and Dot to spend some more time bonding with each other. The following day at school, Dot and Connor become lab partners in biology, much to Michelle's annoyance. Envious, she keeps bad-mouthing Dot since she's down bad and just wants Connor to rumpy-bumpy her. She asks Nina if she's dating anybody and adds that she should get her cherry pop before the year ends or risk becoming a high school spinster. A moment later, Dot's heading down the hall when she comes across an empty classroom. She lets herself in and starts playing the piano there. Connor soon walks down the corridor and notices Dot in the classroom, so he stops to admire her. After a while, Dot heads over to the bathroom and she notices Nina inside. With a sarcastic air to her, Nina tells her that she shouldn't be scared and that she needs some color. She then goes on about how it's a shame she stopped seeing Dot after her mother died since Nina's always wanted a sister. All the while, she smears lipstick on Dot's lips, making her look like a clown. She even adds that if only Dot had some female touch in her life, she wouldn't look like a janitor. But underneath the layers of turbulence in the girl's relationship is friendship. The two were childhood friends until Dot lost her hearing. One night, Dot is struck with grief over her late father's memory. She takes her father's ashes and tastes them while mulling over how he died. He was hit by a truck while waiting for her outside a restaurant. Her father looked both ways, but he couldn't hear the truck honking at him. He was deaf. Dot is pained by the thought that no one ran to save him, to run out and grab him. But most of all, she's pained by the thought that if she had been there with him, things would have been different. 
to soothe herself, she goes to wash her face. But on her way back, Dot witnesses a terrible sight. Paul's voice could be heard from Nina's room, followed by the sound of kissing. He calls his daughter's back beautiful, trailing off as he says that if only she weren't so beautiful. In turn, Nina just tells him that she gained three pounds. Deeply perturbed, Dot rushes back to her room, still shaken up by what she just saw. One night, Nina informs her parents that she will be spending the night with Michelle. Paul is vehemently against this, and he only grows more agitated when Olivia seems to be siding with their daughter and contradicting to what he's saying. Meanwhile, a steely yet petulant Nina begins to run her foot along Paul's leg under the table, telling him softly that she's finished her homework. With Paul just staring at her, she gets up to kiss his cheek goodbye, then leaves. Now that Nina's gone, Paul argues with his wife for undermining his authority, and he insists that he's just trying to raise Nina. After a while, Dot hands a note to Olivia, telling her that she wants to go to the movies too. Olivia is about to drive her, but Paul interjects, insisting that he should do it since Olivia is in no condition to drive. On the way to the movies, it's clear that Dot's very uncomfortable around Paul. While in the theater, Dot keeps a close eye on Nina as she watches the movie with her friends. Connor notices Dot, so he suggests inviting her, but his friends immediately reject the idea since she's a buzzkill. One of them mentions that being deaf must be depressing, but Nina interjects, saying that Dot wasn't born deaf and that it must be worse to lose something than it is to never have it at all. Dismissive, Michelle makes fun of Nina's burst of profoundness and Nina just laughs it off, though it's clear that she feels a touch out of place among her less pensive friends. Dot can't sleep after getting home, and she's ready to leave her room when she sees Paul approaching. She immediately returns to bed and pretends to sleep while Paul enters her room. He strokes Dot's hair, murmuring that he's sick. He's sick and he hates it. I thought when you came here, maybe things would change, he says. I thought maybe having somebody else here would. Paul trails off, not really knowing what he thought. Meanwhile, Nina and Michelle spend the night at Michelle's house. Nina expresses her desire to relocate to a new location and begin a new life. The following day, Connor and his friend invite Nina and Michelle to their place, but Nina isn't interested and makes up an excuse. She returns home early from school, only to discover Dot playing the piano. When one of the strings pop out, Dot curses loudly before vocalizing with the strings as she tunes them. Nina is surprised as the realization dawns on her. Dot is neither deaf nor mute. She's just been acting the entire time. At lunch, Dot is sitting by herself as usual until Nina suddenly slams her tray on the table and sits beside her. In a provocative but wholly demeaning manner, Nina starts berating Dot all while saying how great it is she can say all kinds of things to her since she's deaf. She tells her that she's going to kill her father tonight, that she hates the man but loves him at the same time. Nina hates it when he doesn't let her see her friends. She loves it when he screws her, but at the same time, she hates it when he screws her too. Nina also goes on about how Michelle's father has a gun. And since Olivia's always doped up on her pills, she can shoot Paul without any trouble. Dot is clearly perturbed by Nina's plans and the sordid details of her incestuous affair, but she keeps her composure and gives nothing away. This only pisses Nina off, and she leaves without her ever goading a proper reaction out of her. Later that day, while Dot is playing the piano at school, Connor overhears her and glances through the door. When Dot sees him, Connor tries to approach and talk to her, but Dot isn't interested and gives him a piece of paper in line with their lab experiment, leaving Connor unhappy and hopeless. When evening arrives, the Deer family is having dinner. Connor goes to Dot's house and asks Paul and Olivia if he could go to the library with her. Michelle also arrives minutes after Connor and hands Nina a bag. Dot suspects that there might be a gun inside but she ignores everything and departs with Connor. While Nina and Michelle are hanging out in Nina's room, Paul calls for Nina and forces her to send Michelle home so he can sleep with her. 
In a diner, Connor takes advantage of Dot's deafness and starts going on about his ADD and how he wants to screw her. But then, Dot notices an ambulance and suspects that Nina had already murdered Paul. She hurries back home and sees the bag that Michelle gave Nina earlier, and upon examination, Dot doesn't find any firearms, only adult films. She then walks over to Nina's room, from where she hears, Paul and Nina are in bed. Nina doesn't seem interested in making love, and she keeps calling herself fat, but Paul dismisses her. He claims that he has a present for her, but first, they have to do it. Before they could go all the way, Dot purposely smashes the vase in the hallway, disrupting them. Upon seeing Dot, Nina realizes that she interrupted them because she wants to protect her, not because she's an enemy. Later that night, Nina's crying herself to sleep. Dot comes in her room and lies behind her, and Nina, thinking that it's Paul, says that she's tired. But when she realizes that it's just Dot as she wraps her arms around her, Nina looks ahead, and the two fall asleep that way. The following day, Nina's clad in just her underwear as she asks Dot if she thinks she's fat. Dot shakes her head, and Nina proceeds to tell her that tonight is the night she's murdering Paul and she's doing it at midnight. Then Nina slyly adds that it's a good thing Dot can't hear, otherwise she'll be an accomplice. That evening, Dot calls the Department of Child Welfare, but she couldn't bring herself to speak. Defeated, she simply hangs up. After a while, Dot attends Connor's basketball game with Nina as one of the cheerleaders there. Dot watches Nina and she catches the distant look on her face. After the game, Dot takes Connor to the swimming pool so they can be alone together. Connor goes on about how nice it would be to go on a road trip with Dot, about how he's a self-stimulation addict with ADD who also forgot how to play basketball right. He's comfortable just letting all this out since he believes that Dot can't hear him. Back at the Deer's house, Paul and Olivia discuss Nina and what's best for her future. Suddenly, Olivia tries to seduce Paul but he rejects all of her advances since his attraction to his own daughter is stronger than his attraction to his wife. Back at the pool area, Dot finally gives in to Connor and undresses. They then share a feverish kiss. Meanwhile, Nina returns home to find Paul waiting for her. He gives her a new purse which makes her happy, so she lowers her skirt and whispers in a sultry tone that she'll be in her room. After sharing an intimate moment with Connor, Dot realizes that it's nearly midnight. Alarmed, she dashes back home. Paul follows Nina into her bedroom as she irons her cheerleading uniform. But before he could get intimate with her, Nina stops him and urges Paul to close his eyes, saying that she has a surprise for him. She's all but resolved to burn Paul's face with the hot iron, but Dot comes home, slamming the door to make her arrival known. Nina gets cold feet, and she puts the iron away. Instead, she lies about being pregnant and needing a thousand bucks for an abortion. Struck with dread, Paul agrees to give it to her tomorrow. Later, Nina slips into Dot's bed with her and stays there. The next day at school, Connor approaches Dot, and with the lunch lady as the signer and interpreter, he asks if they can go to the spring dance together. Unfortunately, Dot declines his invitation, signing that she's not right for him since she belongs by herself. Still, Connor is hell-bent on taking her to the dance. Later that night, Nina tries to help Dot get ready for the dance, but Dot's not even interested in going. While doing her makeup, Nina takes on a distant tone as she tells Dot that she's about to be an only child. She's going to kill Paul that night and leave with the abortion money. Nina sounds lost, going on about how she'll probably just be a stripper. And from the way she's talking, it's almost clear that this isn't the life she wants for herself, but she can't seem to find any other choice. When she finishes talking, she puts some lipstick on Dot, saying that Connor would go crazy if she kissed him. This time, she puts the lipstick on properly. Before the girls could leave for the dance, Paul notices the tampon in Nina's bag. He confronts her about it and accuses her of lying about the pregnancy. While Paul's aggressively berating his crying daughter, Dot's playing the piano downstairs, and she hears everything. 
Olivia's in the living room herself, her blank eyes wide as she seems to be hearing everything too. But she doesn't do anything. Soon enough, Paul's berating escalates into violence as he slaps Nina around and attempts to force himself on her. At this point, Dot's had enough, and without thinking, she pulls a string from the piano and rushes to Nina's room. She strangles Paul with the string, yelling at him to leave Nina alone as the man bleeds on his sobbing daughter. When Paul collapses, Nina cries out. In her state of shock and trauma, she curses Dot for killing her father as she sobs over his dead body. Suddenly, Olivia speaks, saying it's a miracle that Dot can hear. She witnessed everything in a state of senselessness. Wholly unconcerned about her husband's death, but astounded by Dot's ability to communicate. Michelle arrives at Nina and Dot's place to pick them up. They leave the house shortly after, changing out of their blood-soaked dresses. After arriving at the dance party for a few minutes, Nina smokes some cigarettes, and Connor invites Dot to dance with him. Eventually though, Dot begins to leave, and when Connor calls out to her, she stops. Finally, he discovers that Dot can hear all this time, and he's completely furious that she just let him go on and on about his embarrassing problems, which mostly had to do with his overactive wiener. He explodes in rage and storms away despite Dot's apologies. Nina and Dot flee the party and rush along a dark forest towards the riverbed, where they can bury their blood-soaked dresses inside the backpack. Here, Nina asks Dot why she pretended and she explains that she wanted to be closer to her dad who was deaf. Besides, Dot wanted to be invisible to everyone else, too. Nina sympathizes with her, and they get to burying the bag. By the time they got home, the girls are stunned to discover that there are already police cars outside their house. As Olivia is being taken to the police car, she stops to talk to Nina. Frantic, Olivia takes the blame for killing Paul with a piano string and she solemnly apologizes to Nina, saying that she never wanted him to hurt her. She asks her daughter if she can ever forgive her, and the police takes her away. The next day, Dot and Nina play a duet on the piano, free now from years of pain, suffering, helplessness, and loneliness. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.